conceptual perspectives people talk Real about talk, it, it throwing shots. all of the elements. <laughs> Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. has had a great week hope you are getting your year off to a great start uh look i'm gonna get right into this you uh definitely saw the intro into this video so you know that we are still pushing a fundraiser for the work we do in the community never has it been so evident and obvious of the work that needs to be done in the community and the turmoil that the community is in and we need to be behind organizations that are actually boots on the ground and authentically presenting themselves as a resource. Uh, the Art Odyssey Project and its many uh, divisions, research, think tank, Black Men Life Rite of Passage, I work with Black women with childhood sexual abuse, domestic abuse, intimate partner violence, which definitely pops up in this particular video. But so much more, we need your support. The time is out for uh, glossing over stuff, the time is out for so much. I want you to take a quick look at the clip that follows and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to lay context to it. Uh, this video is a news report and it is um, Black Girl Unlost is where I found the clip. So I want to recognize her channel, go to her channel, subscribe to her channel. Uh, she seems to be positively sharing things, and I want to support people who do that. Uh, so uh, the link uh, for her channel is also in the description box. I want you to go show love uh, to what she's doing over there. Uh, she seems to be doing pretty good. I need to ask her what she's doing. She, she's got 112,000 subscribers. But definitely go over there and... Uh, subscribe and follow what she's doing. Everybody's doing things from their vein, from what they do, what they know how to do. And I think that it's important uh, that we love and show love and show support for one another instead of being jealous and competitive. Now, check out this clip and I'll be back. Hello, my name is Robert Creighton. I'm 36 years of age. Um, I was a professional rapper. I'm an actor as well. I also do voiceovers and stand-up comedy. I look forward to working in all aspects of entertainment, and I love the everyday grind of continuing to grow an entertainment business. I look forward to working with you. Somebody was shot in the house at 2734. A High Point family's place of comfort turned into a crime scene Saturday morning. There's someone knocking up in front of my house saying someone tried to kill them. Chilling, 911 calls rang in from neighbors who tried to help the two adults that were able to escape the home. The man is saying that it was his father. He said he said he's, he's sure that he still has the gun. Just after 7 a.m. on January 7th, 2023, High Point, North Carolina police responded to a home on 2734 Mossy Meadow Drive after they were led to the home by an adult male and adult female who were running down the street screaming that they needed help. Officers forced their way into the home where they would discover the bodies of five individuals dead from apparent gunshot wounds. 
Those who live in this High Point neighborhood are shaken tonight after learning five people were killed in a home this morning shortly after 7 a.m. And we seen a female and a male outside, which is um, we didn't really recognize her face and usually here in this neighborhood, all of us like kind of know each other. One neighbor who lives just three houses away said she called 911 after those two people started ringing her doorbell and shouting for help. That's scary, like, you know, and nothing like this usually happens in this neighborhood because it's so quiet, like you don't see stuff like that going on here. Officers quickly arrived and with no answer at the door, forced entry into the house. Captain Matt Truitt says that's when officers found all five of the victims, two adults and three juveniles all found dead inside this home on Mossy Meadow Drive. Shelly McMillan lives just around the corner from where the five people were found, her son often riding his bicycle just feet away from the house, as was the case this morning, shortly after officers arrived. He came in the house and he was like, Mommy, there's police cars outside down the street. I honestly didn't think anything of it. I was always fine, son, you know, just come back this way. It wasn't long until McMillan knew something serious had happened, she and other neighbors left in disbelief, learning of the tragedy that unfolded in their quiet suburban neighborhood. It's very unfortunate to hear about what has happened here. This neighborhood is pretty quiet for the most part. It's, it's very unfortunate. Um, I didn't really know them personally, but I would like when I would go on walks, I would see them and, you know, we wave at each other here. So I'm like, yeah, it's just kind of sad that that happened. The victims were identified as 46-year-old Athelia Creighton, her 18-year-old son, Kasim Creighton, her 16-year-old daughter, Nyla Creighton, and her 10-year-old son, Nasir Creighton. The deceased adult male was identified as small screen actor, 45-year-old Robert Creighton Jr., known for his roles in movies such as Southern Fried Stings, Let the Church Say Amen, and many other small roles. According to 911 calls, the two surviving adults were the adult son of the couple and his girlfriend, who was visiting the home at the time. Okay, so as you can see, uh, Robert Creighton uh, is uh, married, obviously for some time, because he has adult children that carry his last name, his wife carries his last name, so... I'm assuming everybody in there is biologically related uh, based off of what I could tell from the news clip. And I watched the entire news clip. I'm only giving you a fraction of what is actually in this clip. You can go to her page and watch the entire video. Um, but what I learned is he had been involuntarily committed. The family uh, submitted to the courts. Uh, he suffered from mental health, uh, uh, mental illness. Uh, undisclosed at this time, but I'm going to continue to look into it uh, and determine. I can almost tell you that some form of bio, bipolar uh, disorder is probably in there and probably some form of schizophrenia. That doesn't necessarily explain the violence, but I can just tell you that those are some primary issues that we seem to be struggling with. Um, and I'm not going to get into the depth of it and all of that right now. What I want to talk about is... If there is no enemy on the inside, the enemy on the outside can do us no harm. We have gone to great lengths to discuss, undress, and uh, articulate the many mechanisms and machinations of white supremacy racism and how it has impacted us as a race. And uh, I commend everyone who has done it. I've done it. I've got volumes and volumes and volumes of work uh, in writing, in speech, in lectures um, that uh, talk about this, and, 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 and it's valid. Uh, we have been under attack from day one. We have been under attack for day one. So I don't want to marginalize that, but there's an African proverb that says, if there's no enemy on the inside, the enemy on the outside can do us no harm. And what it says is when you're whole, when you're healed, when you're operating as a unit, when you're working together, when you're loving one another, when you see the value in yourself, you see the value in the others, and you work to protect that value. You work to protect the interests. Uh, and that is so important in what we are uh, 
needing to do as a people. But when you see things like this, and there are numbers of things, we, we need to look at it in its raw its form. It's a form of uh, domestic violence. And it's not just intimate partner violence because he killed his progeny, he killed his offspring, he killed the children he sired. Uh, if you notice, one son survived and his girlfriend survived who happened to be visiting. They don't live there, but they were visiting. And uh, he awakened to the gun pointed at him, somehow got the clip out of the gun and was able to escape with his girlfriend, ran down the street screaming and asking for help. Uh, by the time police get there, he's killed his wife, three of his children, his 18 year old son, 16 year old daughter and 10 year old son and himself, obviously. Now, uh, the simple part of it is we're imploding, we're destroying one another. The more complex nature of it is we're not addressing mental health. We're not addressing it. Now, the front end of this is our men are more susceptible to emotional breakdown, to psychological breakdown, because they aren't prepared on the front end to manage their emotions, to deal with the, the stresses that come with being a black male. They aren't prepared to assume an identity that is inherent to them. They are constantly chasing what is praised, adored, and revered because that's how they experience what their inherent desires tell them. They want to be acknowledged, but they don't realize that the highest form of acknowledgement is you living in your truest self. But see, that comes from proper racial socialization. That comes from saying, this is who you are. No one can take this from you. No one denying you a job can take this from you. No one uh, tearing down your outward presentation can take this from you. No one trying to marginalize your genius can take this from you. You are who you are. Walk in that and life will prevail for you by opening doors and it's not going to be easy. Life for you is probably going to be difficult for them for any other male on this planet as it has played out over the last several hundred years. That's okay. Your job is to walk in the power of who you are. And one of the essences of your power is that of a protector. Your value in your community before being a provider is that of a protector. You have to, in all essences, be a protector. The one thing you can never be guilty of is harming the very ones that you are supposed to be protecting. There's no true uh, male identity. There's no true uh, essence of manhood and being a destroyer of what you were designed to protect. And you have to put that into their minds. You have to give them that early in life. It has to be the essence of their identity so that at the core of their heartache, at the core of their struggle, at the core of their frustration, the one thing that never crosses their mind is harming what they're here to protect. What they will actually do when you properly socialize them is they will literally sink into what they naturally are when they become pressed. They'll, they'll protect harder because it's the essence of who they are. They're sinking to the purest form of their identity. What do I identify with? If I identify with the money I make, if I identify with being successful as an athlete, as an entertainer, as a businessman, then what happens is when that success is challenged, and it will be, you're not going to be on your game every year, every week, every day. There are going to be some times that you're challenged, that you're pushed, that your back is against the wall, that you are perceiving that everyone around you is viewing you as a failure. What do you have on the inside at that time that says, I'm bigger than this moment, I'm bigger than what I'm going through, I'm bigger than what people are seeing. There's some Something inside of me that will rise again if I remain true to my identity. And that is the true nature of my masculinity isn't my money. The true nature of my masculinity isn't my title. The true nature of my masculinity is to protect defend and then provide. When provision is a struggle, I need to find out why. Another thing that we need to train our young men to do is to come together collectively so that we can lean on each other. This idea that men don't need help is only practiced in the black community. Every other group of men can go to other men 
in that group, in that racial enclave and say, hey, man, look, I lost my job. Hey, man, look, I'm struggling here. And somebody's going to pick up a phone and call somebody. Somebody's going to say, hey, look, this is what I'm going to do for you. And instead of we sit up on these islands and try to live this life that we think everybody is re respecting and adoring. And when we do that, what happens is we lose ourselves in the press of life because we weren't meant to do it alone. This whole idea of the self-made man is destroying people. You need to be able to tap into people. You need to be able to call on people. You need to be able to admit when something's not right. This is not me providing any form of excuse for what this man did to his family. There is no excuse for it. There is no acceptable uh, consequence. I mean, out of this, as far as accepting um, what's going on with this, this this situation it's unacceptable he obviously took the easy way out by killing himself so there can never be any real true justice families are left devastated and questions are left unanswered um obviously as 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 Recent as a year ago, he was involuntarily committed. He was served, uh, meaning that the family had actually went to court and to have him involuntarily committed, and he was ser served and summoned and uh, taken in for involuntary uh, evaluation. Uh, what happened with that, I haven't been able to find out yet. This just happened. Uh, what? What's today? The third. This happened a week ago, and. Um, People are still learning about it, and it's been actually kind of quiet. But here is the problem I have with this. This isn't an anomaly. This isn't some abstract occurrence. This is one of the most incessant phenomenons within the black community, intimate partner violence. Now, before... we just jump off and, and say, okay, it's only the failure of men. Uh, I just talked about and shared um, a story that I'm going to talk about later where uh, I believe her name is LaShawn Bagley killed a uh, professional bull riding champion, young black brother, 27 years old, young black sister, 22 years old, killed him in a jealous rage um, and shot him until she ran out of bullets. Uh, LaShawn Bagley, his name is Demetrius Allen. Uh, Well-known young black uh, bull rider is actually from Texas and this happens. But more than often when we talk about this, uh, the truth is if you look at the numbers, Intimate partner violence or domestic violence within the black community uh, is actually almost equal. Women committed 23% at a 23% rate, men committed at a 24% rate. But when it comes to escalating to murder, it goes out the chart for black men. Number one is black men are more capable of uh, causing that kind of physical harm without a weapon. Um, and second of all, the testosterone levels in men make us naturally more prone to violence when we don't know how to manage it and direct it. There are things, all this stuff is taught that there's a reason we are bigger, we are stronger, we have a natural aggression in us. It's not meant to turn against our women, but when we are not adequately and sufficiently developed and prepared, when we won't confront the mental health elements and aspects of our behavior because it's taboo, because it's not allowed. The one thing I won't admit is that I'm crazy. Uh, no, what you are is teetering on the brink of self-destruction and external uh, destruction at a catastrophic level if you don't get help. We are going to have to do a better job of understanding 
what's at stake here. And we're going to have to come behind from behind the cloud of tabooism and look at things like mental health. Now, this isn't the only issue in our community. There are so many other things that I've talked about. But when you look at something like this and then you realize that I get these stories on my desk daily. And that's why I'm, I'm so that's why I, I had to literally uh, for those that don't, I'm still on the back end of a two week mental health break where I don't work with any clients uh, and my clients are getting antsy. Uh, but I needed this in order to be safe and healthy so that I can not only help them, but I can be okay and that I can be what I need to be to my family and to the people who are depending on me to show up on a regular basis. And I realized that when I took this break, I looked back 10 years and there hasn't been a year or a week in which I had a complete week where nothing was on my calendar, even on vacations, even when we were going on trips and going out of town and doing all this stuff. I was either doing something at the beginning of the week before we left or at the end of the week when we got back. I had never taken off a complete week and I realized after the first week how much it was doing for me to be away from it for a while. And what I've decided is that I'm going to take these breaks on a regular schedule basis. I'm not gonna allow myself to go a year without sitting down. I'm going to do this quarterly. And you know, if I do it quarterly, then I don't have to take two weeks off to recover. I can do it in a week, but you need to have that. You need to have someone you can tap into. You need to be able to call your therapist and not feel like it's a failure to have one. You need to be able to have someone you can seek into. There need to be some people in your circle you can go to and say, hey, man, this is what I'm going through. And lay the same thing. This is what I'm going through. And not be given advice that is detrimental to you. For the purpose of being hard, we are sitting up and doing things and saying things and thinking in ways that doesn't serve the best interests of ourselves, our family, our community, our race and the future for our children. My heart and prayers go out to the Creighton family. Um, I really and truly hope and pray um, that they find some way to, to healing. Um, I am offering the services of the uh, Odyssey Project to the family uh, if they so desire uh, to come in and, you know, receive a certain level of intervention because we're talking about major trauma and grief and then not being able to properly or effectively process it. Think about it. You've got a son who is the only adult son of this family who's just experienced his father kill his mother and his three siblings and himself and he's got to deal with the loss but he's also going to start dealing with guilt because he couldn't stop it because he was able to survive and escape he's going to go through survivor's remorse there's so much that comes with this and the thing is how many in our community are dealing with that on some level and just pushing it under the rug you know it is what it is you know we we made it through Yes, we have. We are some of the, if not the most resilient people on the planet. But resilience is, is not a replacement for healing. It is a representation of strength. But strength wears. How much do you go through before you finally crack, before you finally break, before you finally either just fall apart or you destroy yourself or others. We need to get a handle on this. We need to be able to provide resources on the back end. We need to be able to find, uh, pr provide programs on the front end. We need to be able to do that. We need to be able to answer the call for a healthier black man. Answer the call for a healthier and less depressed black woman. And that is going to require us to be willing to invest in ourselves, to be willing to get behind programs that are doing this and say we need to do it at a 
more extensive level. We need to do it at a broader level. We need to be able to reach more people. That is something we have to do. And I am challenging everyone to get behind the programs that are boots on the ground, that are doing the work, that are offering the, offering the resources, because this is going to be where our health and our healing uh, lies. Number one is, even if they were offering services, Eurocentric uh, psychology isn't the strength of healing in the black experience. So much of psychology's experience, context, per per perception, processing, you, 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 there's only one black experience. Our experience is so unique. You can't uh, possibly, uh, you can't possibly apply a generic intervention, an intervention process, and think that you are going to get optimal results. You need to be able to understand the dynamic at play. So, in essence, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to challenge you. Each and every day, I'm going to challenge you to step up, to stand out, to share the message people need to know, to literally go in your, 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 your wallet, your, pull out your card or, or whatever, your Cash App app, and support the work we're doing. The information is in the description box. This is my challenge to you. We need work to do. Uh, again, I want to thank uh, uh, Black Girl Unlost. Uh, for sharing this initially. I don't know who else shared it, but uh, I want to thank Mary, Miss Mary Peoples, uh, one of my subscribers, for sharing the link with me via email. Again, I encourage anybody who has content that you think needs to have context applied to it, uh, that needs to be broken down in a way that we see how it's impacting us beyond our emotions, please send it to me. I would love to take it on. Uh, again, thank you. Uh, I look forward to working with a lot of you in the future. I look forward to receiving your support. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day.